Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1193, the heart collage pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. Let's look at that die in action. When you open the card, it is just an explosion of hearts. And if you're thinking, well, that mechanism looks a little familiar, you're probably thinking of our photo collage pop-up. So let's talk about the differences. The photo collage pop-up is designed to be used in a side fold card of at least A2 size, whereas the heart collage pop-up is a shrunken version of that mechanism so that it is slimline friendly and meant to be used in a top fold card with shapes. So the heart collage is going to come with a whole bunch of hearts to be able to decorate the mechanism, whereas the photo collage comes with photo frames. With the bigger photo collage die, then the arms for the mechanism come on separate dies, and then you glue those on to the main spinner. But with the heart collage pop-up, because it is such a smaller version of the mechanism, I was actually able to connect the arms to the piece, so it just comes in a single die. And you definitely want that mechanism to be cut out of a strong cardstock. So my recommendation is 100 or 110 pound smooth cardstock. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. The die has both cut and scored, and for the purposes of the video, I'm going to take a pencil and just sketch in the score line so it's easier to see. Two of the arms are offset on the piece and need to be folded in to put them in the correct position. So I'm going to find that fold and then fold that arm to the back. And then I actually want to glue that down on the back. So I do recommend glue for this. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. So I'm just going to make sure that that arm looks straight and then attach it to that little triangle on the back. And I should not be gluing it to this portion that's going to fold away later. See, it's only that little triangle that gets the glue. So just making sure I keep my glue in that little triangle area, then I fold the arm over and into that adhesive. And once that glue sets up, I can turn it back over to the front again. Okay, turning this so that I can work the straight fold first, I'm going to fold that to the back and give it a really good pinch. And then I have diagonal folds, so keeping it in the folded position, I can actually put my thumbnail into a diagonal fold and work it in both directions, and then right back to where I started from. And now the idea is those sections will come forward as the little mechanism closes. So see, as I close the mechanism up, I should be seeing those triangles invert and come into the piece. So just go slowly. You're trying to make two little mountains that fold into the piece like this. This is the closed up position. See how it's going to operate? And I do have to attach those opposite slots, but I'll do that after I add it to the card. And I'll take an eraser and take off my pencil lines before adding that to the card. You choose your card size, but this is a slimline friendly design, so I am doing a slimline card today. I've started with a piece of cardstock eight and a half inches wide by seven inches tall and scored it in the middle for folding. Then I'm using temporary tape to hold together the biggest three rectangles from our long rectangles crosshatch die set and then rolling that through with both pattern paper and cardstock. Okay, then I'm going to take the thin frame out of the pattern paper version and replace it with the cardstock version. And I found the easiest way to add this to the card was to tape those three pieces to each other. Then I could add them to the card as a single unit and then remove the temporary tape. And what's good about this technique of making that inlaid frame is that you don't have any catch points then. There's nothing for the pop-up to come down and catch against because it's all a single layer. Rather than center the pop-up in the card, I have decided to put it offset a little bit to the left. So I'm choosing a location three inches from the left-hand side and putting a pencil line on the center fold. Okay, adding the pop-up, I can look down through the hole that's in the center of the pop-up to make sure that I can see the pencil line through it. So I'm adding my adhesive to the flat parts of the pop-up. I do like glue for this. And then what I wanna do is look down through the center hole of the mechanism and make sure that it's right over that pencil line and that it's straight with the folds lined up with the folds of the card. 
So just taking my time with this so that I make sure that I have a good straight alignment and that the center fold going through the mechanism lines up with the fold underneath. And then I'm not really going to be able to close it yet because I need to get these slots together. So those fold in and then they have to attach to each other. So this is a little fiddly now because I've attached the mechanism on both sides. But sometimes I find that if I lift the card partially, it gives me just enough slack that I can get in there and get those two slots notched together. And in my case, I didn't give my glue long enough to set up before doing that. So it peeled up one side. No biggie. I'll just go in there and add my glue to the base again and then give it a good press. Okay. And this time I will try to be more patient and make sure that those two sides are really set up on both sides of the fold before I try and close it. And then the first time I close it, I'm going to go slowly so that it can train the folds, give everything a good press. And then now I have that mechanism working inside the card. There are four different style hearts that come with the set and each of those dies is doubled to make it quicker for you to get a ton of hearts for your collage. What I like to do is choose three or four colors that coordinate with my card and then just cut every single die out of each of those colors. One of the style of hearts in the set is a 3D expanding heart. So that comes in two pieces. You've got a notched heart and a slotted heart. They have a decorative stitch line around the outside. So for the notched heart at the bottom, just temporarily fold up one of the little sections next to the notch, then get the notch in at the top because you fold it in that section at the bottom, you can slide it through the slot and then unfold on the back and that will lock it together. You have an optional stencil emboss feature on the smallest heart to add little dots around the perimeter of the heart. Embossing a wafer thin die is a two step process because you have an embossing sandwich and a cutting sandwich. So on these little gold hearts, I am going to emboss them first and then change out and cut them. And then while I'm in the business of embossing, I thought it would be cool to emboss a smaller heart into the larger one that I cut out of the pattern paper. Since I'm using a Spellbinders Platinum 6, the embossing sandwich comes with the machine. However, other machines, just go onto YouTube, put into the search engine that you're trying to emboss a wafer thin die. It will tell you the proper sandwich and which accessories you may need to purchase. I like to use a large scalloped heart as the center of my collage. So doing that extra little emboss gives some visual interest to that piece without me having to layer it. Because for this heart, I need to fold it up the center and attach it to the pop-up. Now for that fold, the goal is make it a loose fold. So I'm going to use my bone folder. I'm going to fold it in both directions. I'm going to really try to make that a loose fold so that it will open up easily on the pop-up when the card opens. Then to add that to the pop-up, the glue needs to go on the pop-up, not on the back of the heart because you do not want any stray adhesive. You only want adhesive where the heart is going to touch the pop-up. So adding the adhesive to that center section and then just going in there and pinching that folded heart so that the center lines up with the pop-up and it's attached on there nicely. And then I can always test it. So fold it down, make sure that nothing's catching, that it's opening up nicely. One thing you'll get to know as you start making these shape collages is how each of the arms collapses down into the closed position. So for the top and the bottom arms, they actually slide against the card and come to rest pretty close to the fold. I mean, there's a little bit of distance, but not much. So your best bet for this upper arm is to attach, if you're doing an expanding heart, attach it to the left corner of the arm so that not very much of the heart overlaps on the right side because in the closed position, it has to come to rest against the fold and you do not want it to cross the fold. So see, I just have to check it. So the important thing about shape collages is just like with the photo collage, add an item and then check it and make sure that it's operating, that it can find the closed position, that it isn't catching on something else and be willing to move things. Okay. Especially with these shape collages, you've got a lot of different shapes. You've got expanding hearts, you've got different size hearts, you've got, you know, different angles and things. So just really be willing to change the location of a heart if it creates a catch point. There are certain spots on the collage that the expanding hearts might have a little trouble finding the closed position. So this rightmost arm tends to be one where with an expanding heart on it, as it comes down, it's never really quite sure which way to fold the expanding heart down into the closed position. So 
You could ch change out and just use a flat heart on that arm, or another solution is to basically trap the expanding heart only slightly open so that it can't swing freely, but so that it still gets a little bit of expansion. So basically to trap it, all I'm doing is just adding a small heart over the seam. And then I like to go ahead and open up the expanding heart and give it a good press so that I'm actually putting a fold up the middle of that small heart in the back. But see, now it no longer has the free flowing 3D heart, but it does have a little bit of dimension to it. But it now will close into the flat position really, really easily. And you'll find as you make more and more of these shape collages that no two cards are going to be the same. You'll make different choices for the next one and get a completely different look. The most important thing is just be flexible. Be willing to check after every item that you add to the collage. And if you've created a catch point somewhere, be willing to move that heart. One thing that can be a good idea is actually to use a tape runner as a temporary adhesive to just check locations of hearts. So this little heart that I have coming off the diagonal is almost perfect, but it just catches a little bit against this green expanding heart at the bottom. Whereas if I moved it up just a little bit, it should be fine. So sometimes the slightest little movement of a heart can make all the difference in whether something is a catch point or not. As I continued on, I was getting just the occasional catch point with my expanding heart on the left. So I decided to do that same trick that I did on the right by just adding a heart to kind of trap it in the partial open position so that it can't swing freely anymore. And you can absolutely decorate your collage as little or as much as you want to. So just checking each location as you add a heart, making sure that you haven't created a catch point. If I have a little spot in the collage that maybe is begging for a heart, but there's really no place to put it because of how the thing is operating, sometimes I'll look to the background of the card because maybe I can add a little heart just permanently attached to the background of the card that's going to fill in a visual spot on the collage even though it's not going to pop up with the collage. And just like with all hearts on the collage, I have to make sure that I'm putting that in a spot that does not create a catch point. You can also explore making little heart frames by just nesting in one of the smaller dies into say the bigger scalloped die, then you have a little heart shaped frame that might look kind of cool somewhere on the collage or in the background. For a greeting, I decided on our big hello die, and I do have that placed in a location where it will not be a catch point for the pop-up. As a signing block, I'm using two hearts from our hearts crosshatch die set. And then I'm placing that in a location away from the pop-up where it will not create a catch point. This pretty piece of Cartabella pattern paper that I chose from my stash had these little sections of green leaves that looked like hearts. And so I cut those out using the smallest heart die to work into my collage. And then for the card front, I just used the opposite rectangle. So I had those green ones already cut and the inlay that I took out of the pattern paper, so I just used those on the front, added a greeting from our Word Set 14 Hugs set, and then some of my leftover hearts. My finished card is a standard slim line, eight and a half by three and a half, and will mail in a number 10 business envelope. For the card that's on the packaging of the heart collage pop-up, I shortened the slim line, so that's a three and a half by seven inch card. And definitely try your heart collage mechanism with other shapes. We have two collage add-ons to kind of get you started. So this one's called the butterfly collage add-ons. Once again, the pieces are doubled and you do get the expanding 3D butterfly as one of them. And then we have the balloon collage add-ons. So these add-ons sets do not include a mechanism. That mechanism comes out of the base die, which is the heart collage pop-up but then you can buy these add-on sets that do have the 3D expanding shapes, the butterflies and the balloons. And I chose the hearts to be included in the base die because I just feel like that's the most universal shape you're going to use those hearts on and off the pop-up year round. I love to end assembly videos by showing you some inspiration by our very talented design team. 
even though the heart collage was designed so that it will fit in a slimline card, you are absolutely able to use it in larger cards as well. And Kelly Booth has made a series of really fun heart collage cards in larger cards. I like how she's adding that touch of black into her collages. Look at this color scheme with the teal and the black and the white. I love it. Here's a gorgeous Sending Love mini slimline by Frances Byrne. I particularly like how she put the word sending in the collage. Another gorgeous card, this one by Lois Bach, and you're really seeing the variety of how the designers are constructing their collages. Here's a card by Karen Aiken, slimline size, and she offset the collage to the right. Now I like how she kept the collage simple. She sent me this card, so let me show it in action. Fewer hearts on the collage, but with such a great impact. Kelly Booth with another great heart collage and a larger card, and I like how she's incorporated the new monkey from our Monkey and Lion die set. Sandy Diller with a vision in pink, and I like her choice of greeting. Hello, love. On this card by Fran Sabad, slimline size, I like her touches of gold, and then notice she's incorporated some tiny hearts from other sets. Sandy Diller shows how the mechanism from the heart collage would look in a side fold card and then decorated with our birthday charms. And then this one by Sandy, super clever. She's made a bowling card and the pins all scatter as you open it. You can use your 3D expanding hearts on some of our other pop-ups. So this is a cute idea by Sandy Diller where she's used acetate strips to suspend the 3D hearts above our little labels pop-up. And then in this card by Karen Aiken, she has dangled the 3D heart from our Catherine label pop-up. The heart collage pop-up is available now from a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com, where you can purchase these dies, as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.